Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Between Buddies. I'm here with my good buddy Jace. Hello. My buddy Captain Soldier 76. Hello. And the truest buddy, Raccoon, or Raccoon, depending on how you ask him. I am Raccoon. (laughs) (laughs) Why do you have an accent? I don't know. Also, also, fuck you, Wokey. Why is he the truest buddy? Because he's the buddy that hasn't been on yet. I have to hype him (laughs) up, man. You can't. If you don't hype up your buddy, then people won't be like, oh shit, Raccoon is in this one. Oh my god. Yeah, I apologize, guys. Work's been slamming me harder than, well, I'm trying to think of a nice sexy reference, but I really can't right now. Slamming you in your butthole all day, all night is what uh, the sexy way of saying it. Yeah, Jace can tell you all about that. Can't you, Jace? He's been getting reamed. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I, I no longer need fiber in my diet, man. It just falls out of me. Disgusting. Also, since yes. um, we might la- lose Raycoom at any point, uh, we're gonna have a safety word for Raycoom. Uh, the safety word will. You guys be... will know it when you hear it. Yeah. Let's, let's not even tell him. Let's not even tell him. You guys okay. can know it when you hear it. Okay? Yeah, yeah. You'll just know yeah. that if something happens and then we lose Raycoom, you'll hear a uh, you'll hear a phrase and then he's gone. <laughs> So let's get into the episode. As we said last time, today's topic is going to be about amusement parks. And before we get started, some people actually replied with some of their uh, favorite stuff. And I figured that's a good way to get into the mood. So I'll say some of them. Uh, this one's from Alucard. He says, I live in SC and I've loved the Scooby-Doo Ghost Blasters right at Carowinds. And then I replied to him saying, I looked this up and I was a big, I'm a big fan of Scooby-Doo and I'm extremely jealous. And then he started talking about how there's like a, in his specific place, it goes into like, when it's Halloween, it turns into Scarrow Wind and it's Mm -hmm. like crazy. And I was like, that's awesome. And then that also, we're going to go on a road trip to go there, but I'll tell you guys about that later. We're totally going to go though. Uh, from Wet to Alouette, he says, I'm not a fan of amusement parks, but I like Holiday World it's in Santa Claus, Indiana, more than any other thing that I went to as a kid. And uh, I was like, that's cool. I forgot that Santa Claus, Indiana was a place. Is and, that an, an entire yeah. theme park that's like holiday themed? Yes. So there have been multiple mm, holiday like themed heart. Santa Claus places, and specifically, I think Santa Claus, Indiana, and uh, that's one of them. Uh, there's some weird amusement parks out there. And then finally from Nighthawk, he says, I'm afraid of roller coasters and heights, so I've never been to a theme park before, but I've been to a water park, Splish Bash in New York. It was fun. So that's his for right there. And also, I'm 5'4", so roller coasters are not my thing for a short dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, you just got to wear some pumps, man. That's how you cheat them. <laughs> that's where you... Won't the pumps, if you're in a roller coaster, just hit you on the top of your head? I mean, like, it'll be fine, you know. See, that's what, that's what lawsuits are for. I gotta say, 5'4 isn't that short. Yeah. And you gotta take advantage of that fucking height and, like, body build because I can tell you, as a tall, fat man, fuck, there's so many roller coasters I can't ride just because of, like, head space or leg space. Or just I can't fucking fit in it just in general. Not to mention the dick space, you know. I can't make all the room for that. Hey, that's, it's a lot that's of a serious. That's a serious problem. I'm not yeah, gonna man. lie. Dick yeah. space is. Are you gonna hear, tell me that dick space is extremely important? <laughs> it to is. It is. I totally referenced it last week too about uh, what was it the Batman ride at Six yeah. Flags? Oh, that's right. Like, <laughs> yeah. If you don't fucking sit properly, your your balls are just like really mashed in there. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't feel good. Not not at all. And that's not what I pay for. If I want to get my balls smashed, I'll go to the professionals. I won't go to the Batman ride at Six Flags. Oh, I thought we were, thought we were going to go to LA for the professionals for that. Never mind. Never mind. Sure. So yeah. before we start with all our own specific amusement park stories, I'm going to go to Raycoom because just in case, again, he might leave at any point. I want you to tell us yours. Um, full story or short story? I feel like the short story is much better just because it paints enough of a picture. If that's okay. Yeah. You know, and not to mention, when shows up, let's just say this. It involves a certain amusement park. Name the amusement park. It's you okay. know, you fucking name it. You name fucking names. name it. Disneyland. Name names. All right, California Disneyland. Park, okay? Let's just say this. California Adventure. Um, uh-huh. That Guardians of the Galaxy ride. There's a lot of alcohol. Um, there's a picture. There's my nipples. And apparently I ruined a kid's birthday. <laughs> that is an awesome combination. 
Yeah, that's that's all I really need to say. You know, that's all I really need to say. Did they kick Disneyland you? does not like seeing nipples on the pictures. No, and like true. you know, like yeah, my friends overheard it, like you know, a, a father going, "Oh yeah, you know, let's go get get you a picture, son, and stuff like that. You know, it'll be great." And the kid's like, "Yeah, that's great." And then they're like, "Oh, it, it said something <laughs> happened. Something wrong. What happened?" And then the cast members like, "Well, somebody was being very naughty on wait, that ride." Wait, 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 wait! You did this on purpose? <laughs> Hey man, you get to the top of the, that very top right there. I couldn't think of what to do, so I just flashed a uh, flash nipple, you know? It's a guy nipple, you know? I'm to, free the nipple, okay? Hashtag free the nipple. That's, that's okay? Fine, I don't care. But the fact that you did it consciously because your friend had heard this in the line is a little bit like fucked no, up. No, no, that's the I didn't. No, no, I, this was afterwards. This was after like the whole entire oh, thing. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. No, I'm not that screwed up. No, this wasn't a, mention. like a, a plot where you heard like this is going, like, oh boy, I can't wait to get onto this ride and take a picture afterwards. And you were like, I'm about to ruin this whole kid's career in one nipple. <laughs> And those would be like fantastic. I would be very proud of my nipples if it can ruin careers like that. But no, my nipples only ruined a kid's birthday. Yeah. <laughs> well, that and my alcoholism. Yeah. That, but that was uh, because you threw your, your beer can at the kid as he was passing by. Yeah, because he made fun of my nipples. I, Not really, I, no. Why, why won't Disney let you buy another man's nipples to bring home with you? That feels unfair. I... You know what? I don't work for those guys. You need to ask them yourself. But I feel like any nip is a bad nip just to show on those pictures, you know? I get, Do you actually no. have to but wear... Yeah. Do, you, do you know if you have to wear clothes to be in Disneyland? Not, yes. not like full-on pants. Yes. Like, yes. You, have, like, no, the shirt? You, have, you have to wear clothes. There, there is a dress code. I had no idea yeah. that there was a dress yeah. code. So what if it's super hot and like some dude wants to take off his shirt? He can't? No, he can't. He'll be asked to no. leave. Yeah. That's crazy. I had no idea. I just assumed that it was pretty every, everyone was pretty cool. Just don't take a picture of it and we'll be fine. Yeah. I, I, have, I have this isn't like your like Disney man. Come on. <laughs> I had a friend whose mom in the eighties uh was very punk rock. Oh, and let's just say she was wearing a perfect amount of clothing uh when she told us this story. She was wearing a normal amount of clothing. It was just that her her jeans were torn, and of course she looked punk rock, and and they denied her access. They were just like, "No, you can't come into the park." So back then they could just like fucking nope. Get your punk shit out of here. <laughs> we don't want it at the yeah. America's Family Park. Yeah. That's crazy. To be fair, that's true. So here's my story. This is now we're transitioning into mine. I used to work for um, Universal City uh, Park, the the park in uh, California. Is that actually what it's called? Universal Studios. That's the name Universal of it. Universal Studios yeah. Hollywood. Hollywood, yes. Uh, so I used to work there. And when I worked there, one of the things they told us is that you had to dress for work very appropriately. So you had to have a very good haircut. You had to have no facial hair at all. And when I think they asked, it was like, how come we can't have any of this stuff? And she was like... Well, it's because you you might scare the foreigners because they have different ideas about what can be okay. They're here to have a good time, so we don't want to like scare them or anything. Hmm. And I was like, okay, I, I guess that kind of makes sense. If if you're like getting a park where it's like different um, values or like different, you don't want to experience culture shock from people who are specifically there to be like, oh, it's okay if they paid to come here and look like this, but you you work here, you can help me out, right? <laughs> so I guess the idea was that you have to dress extremely appropriate for it, and uh, that's a, that's actually what eventually got me fired. Is that if uh, just to let people know a little bit more about me, I have a beard that won't stop growing regardless of <laughs> how quickly I cut it. So when I went into my first day at Universal City um, to work, my beard was one hundred percent gone. On day two, my beard was back, <laughs> and it was growing. And then on day three, I got a notice that said, hey, someone, like one of the people that I was working with said, hey, you might want to keep a check on the beard. And I said, okay, I will. Thank you uh, for reminding me. And I will make sure to keep an eye on it. Day four, uh, I get pulled aside and asked, how come you didn't shave? And I said, I wasn't told to shave. I was told, can you keep a, keep track of it? And I thought that it meant like... um. 
uh, you know, make sure it doesn't go any wild. And he's like, no, we wanted you to shave what you currently have. These motherfuckers wanted me to shave every three days <laughs> to make sure that I don't scare anyone I mean, with my giant beard. To be fair, I mean, I understand your pain. Because my my beard doesn't grow nearly as fast as yours, mm. but it grows fast enough to where it's a hassle. But I, I can maintain, like, shaving every other day because I, I like the feeling of fresh shave. So for me specifically, the thing that ended up being the problem was is that one, after Universal, the last thing I wanted to do was shave because <laughs> you walked around. I had to like stand up. I was a patio host, which meant I was basically a janitor, but it was a nice way of calling yourself a janitor. Um, I had to clean up after people. I had to be out in the sun. I was walking constantly. And if you remember any of the stories that I've said, I really don't like being on my feet at all. <laughs> so the idea of me being out in the sun for uh, hours at a time until finally someone said, it's okay to come back and sit down, uh, not the coolest thing for me. I was extremely tired every single time. Also, I don't have com- I did not have comfortable shoes at the time, so my feet fucking were killing me the entire time I was up, and there was just like, no way. And they specifically told you you can't be sitting down either because they don't want the people to think that you're lazy. <laughs> They don't want a bad idea of what the the, the the Universal City people are like. And I was like, okay, that's fine. I'm going to do my best even though I'm literally tired. So when I got told like, hey, we told you to shave the beard. And after, <laughs> yeah, I should have taken this as an example of maybe I should go shave the beard if I want to keep this job. I came back the next day not shaved. <laughs> so I kept it. I actually came back. <laughs> I came back worse. <laughs> you should have came back even more disheveled. You know what I mean? Somehow. Yeah. Yeah, like not even wear a uniform, but maybe like wear it like all torn up, you know? Yeah. It also does it also doesn't help that when I was there I started getting associated with another person there who um I I got friend friends with him from like the meeting from the get go. By the way, actually trying to get work at a a theme park is the most strenuous thing in the world because you have to basically do a casting call. I was I survived round one. And then I survived round two, and on the final round, I was let go. <laughs> and I had to go <laughs> weeks of, like, actual training before I was finally let go. But it was, like, an arduous process compared to the current work I had where I just went in, I said hello, and they gave me the job. It was way easier, <laughs> and I get paid more at my current job. I will say that, yeah, like, for whatever reason, I'm not sure if uh, what what jobs are uh, your listeners have, mm-hmm. but – the the closer you are to minimum wage, the harder they fucking make you work. Yeah. And, and they will just, like, juice every last fucking bit of energy out of your soul. And, like, when you enter, like, the office workforce or, like, something along those lines, you'll realize that no one is working as hard as people who are working in customer service. Because that's it. It's some bullshit. Yeah, it really is. Like when I went from like, um, cause um, Wilkie, I used I used to work with Wilkie, you know, yeah, and like you know, Wilkie has seen me go from like, um, you know, from you know his level up to like supervisor up to essentially being his boss, you know, and like, like, um, Jace is right. Like it's crazy how much of a change it is, you know. But like, um. I mean, like, you know, me moving up and stuff like that, I made sure to bring the same kind of energy and, like, work, you know, as I went from part-time to full-time. I mean, like, Jace can tell you about that. Um, but, yeah, like, don't, don't be afraid to aim a little bit higher, guys. You know, you'll, you'll be surprised to see, like, the increase in quality of life and shit like that. Yeah, definitely. That, that's your news. Yeah. Uh, that, that, the more that's, you know. That's your inspirational quote from Ray Coom <laughs> for this episode. <laughs> Remember, yeah. everyone. Also, you know, uh, invest uh, in yeah. plastics. Inv- yeah, invest in plastic. Plastic is on the up. <laughs> There's nothing wrong no, going on. No, don't listen to neither of them. Plastics are down. <laughs> Thank you. I still don't ask invest for in plastics. Invest in renewable resources. People are now more than ever, including me, going, the fuck you mean? It? Give me a straw, asshole. So now I'm getting more <laughs> straws than ever because they're giving, they're gated my access to straws. Oh, uh, shit. We're going to run out of straws. Fuck. Oh, fuck. I've, I've ever have. told you about how when one time when I went to Tobby's, it was the day of the straw ban that they were getting. Not the straw ban, the straw new legislation. Some guy walked into the Tommy's and Tommy's has their straws out perfectly out in the open. And a guy went up to the counter, did not actually go to the food counter, looked at the straws and said, 
man, I need, I'm going to need these straws, man. Free straws. And he took all the fucking straws and walked out of the Tommies. And none of the employees at the Tommies noticed what the fuck had happened. But I watched it <laughs> single-handedly. And I was like, hey, some guy just took all your straws. And the manager was like, what? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> And I said, yeah, your straws are gone. That guy just came up and took your straws. And then she looked out and she's like, the straws are gone. Oh my fucking God, it's him, the turtle strangler. <laughs> that guy looked like he was, He thought that there was about to be a wide ban on all straws. And he was like, I need to build up now. I need to get my army of straws ready for when the apocalypse comes. Uh, the Can other he... thing I was going to uh, say for to, to put a close to the universal thing is that when I got uh, – so the other guy that I ended up uh, being uh, – hanging out with a whole bunch, on day two, he broke one of the washing machines. What? What? There was, like, reports of, like, yeah, something screwed up. You know, one of the – not like a washing machine, like, as in clothes, but washing for, like, the boards. It's mm -hmm. like, yeah, one of those big machines that we looked at and people – they told us to be careful around. I think somebody broke it. And then one of the guys – I was like, hey, and I was like, did you hear about this? He's like, they're pulling it out of proportion so they didn't break it. It was just – it was just like <laughs> – I was like, you fucking broke it, dude? He's like, yeah, I guess I did. You know, I, 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 it's my first day. <laughs> I, did, I tried my best. So I ended up um, getting with him, and one time when we were coming back to the back, uh, a lady from, I'm going to assume, was from, let's say, Wisconsin, someplace where it's not very sunny. She started telling him, was like, I thought that was supposed to be sun in California. It's out, and there's clouds everywhere. And so this lady was basically, they tell us, like, if someone comes to you with problems, you have to be very uh, listening and try and make their time at the park better. And I was like uh so he got trapped because this lady was basically complaining about why he couldn't control the summer in california why <laughs> <laughs> what's he supposed to do about that yeah so then i was like oh man he was like is there any other you know i'm sorry your experience has not been enjoyable like hopefully the rest of the park has been good for you she's like um we also came here all the way for spongebob and spongebob is not appearing at the park today <laughs> And that's all my kid wants is to see Spongebob. And at that point, I was like, I don't control when fucking Spongebob comes out, lady. I don't know what you want from me. And thankfully, one of our managers came up and was like, uh, so I was like, all right, here's the current situation. But at that point, I've already been associated with this guy as like not the best employee in the world. And I also <laughs> refused to uh, shave my beard. At the same not refused. I just didn't want to do it because I was fucking tired from all the working at Universal. <laughs> So when we got the axe down, and this is the most fucked up thing, they took us to the back of the, uh, I guess, what is now Minions Land, into like a weird like uh, bistro place. They separated us and said, if you hear your name, go to the back. So I got to hear my name, and they said, we're going to have to let you go. We're not going to do it. Now, here's the fucked up thing, is that after I got let go, and all the people were left inside, and they were like, basically, what I'm going to assume is after they kicked me out, I was the last person to get kicked out. Um... They went inside, told the other people they have a job, and as I was walking away, having lost my job and had, uh, who, which at this point, like, I had been trying very hard to find a job, and I thought I had finally found some place that I could actually work at. So it was, I was not in the best of places, but as I was leaving, I heard a bunch of people going, yeah, because <laughs> they got to keep their job. <laughs> what the fuck? And, <laughs> and so when I went back, because I had to turn in all my stuff, I stole my name tag. <laughs> And I got to keep my name tag and I never gave it back to them. So I still have a name tag with my name and favorite Universal movie, which I thought it would be really funny if I put down Fast and Furious, but I put I chose King Kong instead. <laughs> and that was my time at Universal City. And I have not been back there except for for Horror Nights because I really like going for Horror Nights. But it's been uh, it's been a place to go to. That's my basic story from there. I used to work at one and then I no longer work at one. So let me transition from your story into my story, because I have some words for you, motherfucker. What? Okay. Or not mean? necessarily you, <laughs> but Universal Studios okay. in general. Okay. You're talking about me. <laughs> I was about to I'm say, saying. listen, man, I know we differ on the straw thing, but we can talk about it off screen. <laughs> I was going to say, I hit my nipples this time, man. Okay? Like, yeah. <laughs> um, so... My story, uh, I think, takes back like maybe three years, three years at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, Harry Potter Land in fucking Universal Studios had just opened. Mm 
uh-huh. uh, they had they had the Florida one for a while, but this is the first time that the Universal Studios Hollywood had it. And I had a friend come in from uh, out of country. They they haven't visited in a long time, and they love Harry Potter. So we all went as a big group to go check out uh, fucking Harry Potter land. And the thing about that is, in Florida, uh, they had increased the size of their um, the the carts on the uh, what the fuck is the Harry Potter ride called? Escape from Gringotts. No, not Escape from Gringotts. The one where you go through the castle. Oh shit. I don't remember that one. I remember it's Escape from Gringotts. You keep telling it. I'll go look for it. I'll look yeah. it up. But um, the so they in Florida they extended the sizes of the um, of the seating there because one people with disabilities couldn't get in, people who were larger couldn't get in, and you the thing turns out is that you didn't have to be that large to not be able to ride the ride. Now the thing dark, is, dark arts at Hogwarts is what it's called. Dark dark uh, arts at Hogwarts. Uh, Hogwarts yes, yeah. yeah. There that you. sounds, I think, right. Yeah. Close um. <laughs> so we waited through this like two hour long ride, uh, well not ride, uh, basically walk through Hogwarts Castle, and then we got up to the ride finally, and they were about to get on, and I sit down. And to my fucking total fear and realization, I was like, oh, I, I don't fit in this. But, you know, as a, as a, as a big man, you kind of have to roll with the punches and you're like, okay, whatever. Now, I step aside because I'm like, okay, I'm not going to ride this. It sucks that I waited two hours in line for this. And I wish, like, they could have extended the sizes because they built this one after the fact. And I, I wish that someone maybe before I waited two hours in line was like, hey, big man, you a little bit too big. <laughs> big boy, uh, where you think you going? You think you're going on the ride? <laughs> you ain't going on the ride. Oh, honey, what you doing? Get out the line. <laughs> I'm just saying they wouldn't do this shit to Hagrid. This some bullshit. Yeah, well, it's uh, yeah. so I want to say I mean, the, reason, had, like, the reason I mean, haven't had that bitchy motorcycle though. I'm sorry, I had to put that out there. <laughs> That's fair enough. Uh, yeah. I think the reason why it ended up being that way was because of um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, I want to say that before they made the improvements to Florida, they they had already started production on the Harry Potter thing, meaning that by the time they had made the improvements, because it took a long ass time to get Harry Potter over here, because. The Hollywood version of Universal City uh, theme park mm-hmm. is super, super small <laughs> compared. Yes. To, it's built stupidly because it's on a fucking hill. So everything yeah. looks dumb. And yep. it's like an actual studio. It's not, not like fucking Florida. It's like, yes, we have real studios here on the back lot that oh, yeah. they're actually filming on consistently. Those were but, the actual uh, sets. I, I get it. Back to the Future that burned down. Yeah, so, like, in my head, you know, I wasn't too mad. I was, like, a little bit, you know, like, oh, that fucking sucks. But, like, I got off, and I was waiting for uh, my friends and family at the uh, at the end of the queue. But what I witnessed afterwards broke my fucking heart. Mm-hmm. So the group after us, another man, had been asked to get off the ride and that he would not be able to ride because um, the way the seating is like, there's a, there's a shoulder, there's like a pull down bar and you're kind of like seated in like a tall uh, rectangular bucket seat. Yeah. And your shoulders have to go inside of this rectangle. This man was built like a shit brick house. (laughs) He was like, he he was like, he was, no, he was thin, but like buff as fuck. Okay. Now, the fucked up thing is he was like like, full on Harry Potter regalia. Like all, he he has fucking like Gryffindor scarf on. He had obviously, he was so excited for this. He was so 
fucking happy to finally ride this ride. Did he put a scar in his head? He took a knife and put a little lightning bolt <laughs> just for today. No, no, it was it was what happened is kind of much worse than that. Oh. And all you know, also he was there with his partner, uh, or whoever, like either husband, boyfriend, whatever, who was also a big Harry Potter fan. Oh, so this was definitely but there. The, this partner uh, kind of did him a little dirty as where my, my friends and family were like, yo, if you can't write it, we're not going to write it. I was like, no, 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 you guys go ahead. You guys go ahead. You know, yeah. there's, there's just go ahead and write it. That's fine. I don't care. <laughs> His boyfriend and or husband did not offer this because obviously they were such a big Harry Potter fan as well that they didn't want to lose this opportunity. <laughs> So when he was asked to get off, his partner stayed on the ride and he had to get off and he stood by me. But while he was standing by me, he was like quite obviously crying. Oh, and like seeing him cry made me want to cry. And I was like, I, I understand your pain. I'm so fucking sorry you were like two little boys under the cover but you were huge boys <laughs> and the cover was too small <laughs> Yo, I mean, like, you have to imagine that like this book series even though we are adults at this age was made for our generation at the time that we had grown in through the books through the films and then finally hey we're finally making a theme park i'm sure this man was so fucking hype to get on this ride, but just kind of really coldly and crassly, like the employees had not been like it. Harry Potter land had just opened. I'm sure they had other training of like, yeah, you got to stay in character, stay in the magic or whatever. And they're fucking swamped. And they just had no heart or anything. Not even a, I'm sorry. They're just like, sir, you can't, you can't get on the ride. You have to get off. They were just like, when guardian, go fuck yourself and get on this (laughs) ride. Expelliarmus, the fuck out of here, buddy. Sorry. Expelliarmus, oh. they scream him out of the ride. Yeah, so I later uh, I later saw him again at the Three Broomsticks, you know, having, having a good old English breakfast. So he looked a little bit better then, but damn, if that didn't break my heart. <laughs> wow. No, that, that 100% sucks. Especially that makes, when me you're feel like... worse. that makes me feel worse than my story. <laughs> Like I'll, I'll be honest with you, when uh, Nintendo Land opens up in Universal and I am denied a ride, I'm about to ball my fucking eyes out as I watch my <laughs> other family who are 100% gonna leave me behind to go ride the Mario ride as they go happy around. Don't worry, Hector. You can ride me as Yoshi and we'll go around there. You know? You'll have the best <laughs> ride ever. Yes, me. let's do it. I can finally live out my oh. dream of being a fat Italian man and dumping his dinosaur buddy. I can finally get my, <laughs> achieve my dream of like eating anything I want as a dinosaur. You know, you gotta make the noises. Gotta make them. (laughs) 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 That leaves one last story from Captain Ginyu. Take it away, Ginyu. I don't I don't don't know what direction to go with my story. You all had like different directions. (laughs) Or or I guess the last two were kind of in the same direction, but I've never ruined anyone's experience. Don't think I can (laughs) I can really talk about is how I've gotten to many amusement parks free. <laughs> go ahead, tell what, do tell it, what you guys do say. it. I also so like, say, if you, uh, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, like, like okay, so in in high school, I was a band geek. I was involved in many band activities, whether it be jazz band, concert band, mm-hmm. or marching band. Uh, a lot of the gigs that we got in are. Or the places we go involved us performing and getting in for free because of it. So uh, two of those places, most obviously, are Knott's Berry Farm and the Disneyland uh, Parade. So Knott's Berry Farm has a... I'm not even sure if it was a parade necessarily. I think we, we were just, like, playing. I, I never I never thought about this. Yeah, I, I knew that you were in band, but did you perform at Disneyland? I did. Yeah, I totally cool. fucking did. Yeah. Right. Wait, yeah, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait a fucking minute. How have yeah. we been friends this long and you never told me this? Yeah, because you never, you never fucking asked. Bitch, anyway. when is this gonna happen? <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> it's good thing happened with me. Like, yeah. 
I know, I know, I know you Ray said King. Hector also, but I know, I know that your name has been revealed. No, and my like... name has been revealed. People can say I'm Hector. Yeah. We're back. Yeah. I had to edit out Raccoon's <laughs> blunder. Because <laughs> he... we're so good buddies, he just wanted I, to call you. I just buddies. said my name right now, and did nobody else catch that? Fuck me, man. I'm going to have to cut that too. <laughs> Why are you going <laughs> to... Okay, so as we were saying, Ginyu is trying to justify why he never told his good buddy that he never he played at Disney. <laughs> because you never fucking asked. You Nobody's like, ever fucking there's asked. There's plenty of things that we don't ask. How are we supposed to know to ask? You can't just, what's the meaning of life, Ginyu? What's the meaning of life? <laughs> to crush your look, enemies, look, look. see them driven before you. Look, I, I, I feel like I, I was not... Okay, maybe at the time I thought it was awesome. But nowadays, when I reflect back on it, I was not a good good musician. So no, that's, the that, opera... that makes it even better. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> <what> you... <laughs> so, you just so shittily I, making... I, uh, uh, um, you got a friend and me on like a, like a saxophone or something and just fucking it up? Hey, look, look. There were people it's... in the band... That could totally improvise that. I'm not gonna lie, but me myself, I wouldn't consider myself an amusing, uh, an amazing musician. I could, I could read and play written music just fine, but like other shit, like that, that involves improvising, I am fucking doo doo. <laughs> but yeah. like, I, I understand the, the thought process when you're like, wait, why the fuck would we ask? Like, how would we even know to ask? I, I mean, I feel like I've, I've said things before, like, hey. I've been in the Rose Parade before, not just once. Oh, you were that much of a band geek. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Wow. Right? So I've I've been in the Rose Parade before twice, and then I've I've marched a parade in London, and Na- maybe that would have opened up television? London national yeah, London. fucking television. You went to London? Yeah, you know this. I do. <laughs> yes. Friendship, guys. This is the true definition of friendship, right Friends. here. I gave la la Look, la la la. Remember, la. We were in the same speech class. I gave a speech about it. That speech what about was, uh, what was my speech about? <laughs> fucking comic books. Batman. No, no, no! It was, it was, it was because his speech. I remember one very specific speech, um, and I learned a lot about Batman and his kids because he gave a very passionate speech about. All five Robins. That's fucked up because I don't remember that speech. <laughs> oh. Maybe that's why you don't remember me telling you I went to London just specifically to play for the New Year's. You parade. don't remember how you edited it in tears as you got up to a picture of Damien? <laughs> yeah. And Stephanie Brown was just like a side note over there. Oh, yeah, she also existed too. That was a weird thing. Uh, continue on, Ginyu. So you Sorry. played. You played the parade. You played, played the, the Rose parade. Bowl. Yeah. Okay. No. Back. So back to Disneyland. Like, there's there's one very specific thing I love to do, and you can't do it anymore because the arcade is gone. I think that's where the uh, Star Wars theme stuff would have been if they yeah. didn't open up. Uh, uh, what's just, the Edge of Tomorrow? No. What's Star Are you Wars? talking? Are you t- talking about the Starcade? Yeah. It's like right next to uh, Space Mountain. Yes. Yeah. There's yeah, there's, so that... there's nothing there right now. They just there. It's just closed for whatever reason. Yeah. So the my favorite thing to do at Disneyland every year. I think we only went like two years for for high school because the other times we auditioned we weren't good enough. But we made we made it successfully two years in a row. And uh, the favorite thing to do was go to the Starcade and play none other than. DD motherfucking R, just like we were talking about last episode. <laughs> <laughs> this, Fuck. however, was a terrible fucking idea because combined with walking around the park all day, the parade being at like seven o'clock, we hopped on that shit at like five o'clock, an hour before call time, and played the fuck out of it. So oh, that is a dumbest... our feet were dead. <laughs> you dumbest fuck. <laughs> Our feet were fucking dead as shit, bro. Like, as soon as we got off and we're making our way backstage for call time, we're like, bro, how the fuck, how fucking long is this parade? And our band director was like, it's not that long. You just go around the uh, the main plaza and come back. It's not too bad, but you got to stand there for a little bit and then play a song. I was like, okay, that doesn't sound too bad. Fucking step off happens and like, Two songs in, I'm like, I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't fucking do it. My feet fucking are so fucking tired. 
Goofy, save me. <laughs> yeah. Me but, uh, <laughs> nah, bro, we played fucking, uh, we played, you know, Mickey Mouse's, uh, the Mickey Mouse March. Oh, you guys played that? Oh, shit. We usually just yeah. played marches and stuff like that, but okay, he went with that. So okay. it was before the modern day version that. of the parade where they play When Can I See You Again? <laughs> yes. All right. Fair yeah, enough. we played the Mickey Mouse March. And uh, I remember, like, being backstage and looking across the parking lot and being like, hey, there's the Santa Barbara band. And, like, you know, when you're a band geek, you remember all the bands that you've competed with because they were in our class. But they also, also because they hosted a a competition with which we end our, our season with every year. So, like, we go to Santa Barbara, uh, we do the competition, then we hang out in the pier, where I also have many stories of playing football in the dark and losing glasses and tackling our female drum major to the ground because I couldn't see. <laughs> Point aside, we see them, and I'm like, oh, my God, they were good enough to get in here, too? Fuck yeah. We don't talk to them, but that's tight. And then I remember, as I was looking across the parking lot, fucking Buzz Lightyear in full ass costume walks by. I was like, what the fuck? The <laughs> costume is tight as fuck. And then like trailing behind him, I see Woody. I'm like, what the fuck? That shit's tight as fuck. And then like, it was around Christmas time. So like that float where Mickey sits on top of like a sleigh in a Santa Claus costume yeah. passes by. And like, I was amazed. It was like meeting your favorite celebrity or some shit. I'm like a fucking teenager when you're not supposed to like this kind of shit. And fucking Mickey Mouse passes by in a fucking sleigh and you're like, oh my god. It's the fucking we're king. Actually, it's the fucking king and we're actually doing this. Holy shit. <laughs> this isn't yeah. happening. You know, I imagine that, that, that shit's cool as hell. I wonder, I wonder yeah. what the guy in the suit must have been thinking, you know? He was thinking. He was staying in character. He was going Buzz Lightyear here of Star Command here to <laughs> play in the parade today. Hey, that costume is legit though. Like if you ever get a chance to see it up close, it's clean as fuck. Oh yeah, the Disney uh, costume stuff is great. It's much better than the old days where they look like horrifying <laughs> monsters. <laughs> Buzz Lightyear to Star Command. There's a very sweaty Hawaiian boy here. <laughs> If I were to guess, it seems like he's been dancing to the song, I, 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 I want a butterfly. <laughs> we're diamonds in the sky. And also Captain Jack, A-O Captain Jack. Come reporting back to Star Command. Disneyland is the only place on Earth now, if they still had Starcade, there was the slight possibility of a crossover to play Captain Jack with Captain Jack. It's true. Oh, it would have been the shoot. only chance. Oh man, I'm I'm bummed out to hear that that arcade's gone now. I really like that place. Uh, it's, it's been, been gone. It's been gone. For yeah, a while. I know. I it tell, tells there. you how long I've been away from Disneyland. It's been. That's fine. We have Pokemon Go. Is there really a Pokemon Go stops at Disneyland? Isn't there like some weird thing about Pokemon there? There Go? is. You no, know, there's a lot of Pokemon Go stops at Disneyland, like an immense amount, and. When people are waiting in line, they're playing. So if you want to do some Pokemon Go, Disneyland is the place. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Uh, wow. that That's cool. I really like the parade at Disneyland. If possible, if I had enough money, I would have that parade play at my funeral. <laughs> the entirety of it <laughs> as it goes on. Do you think, how much would it cost to have like a funeral parade at Disneyland, I wonder? A, too a much money? A funeral? Yeah, a funeral parade. You know, kind of like they do down in New Orleans. You know, like when somebody dies. No, nope. they no, they will not allow you to do that. All right, <laughs> listen here. Do you think they do that? Like, do you think they probably do that, do that for Michael Eisner, man? Like, nope. yeah, they'll they'll do it. No, they won't do it for Eisner. Unfortunately, <laughs> the, the Eisner will not be remembered at the parks. Okay, but like, like, like okay, say that like, like, like Walt Disney uh-huh. somehow come back to life. You know. Yeah, as is the. And he loses life, and he was, yeah, you know, because you know they're cryogenically freezing him, right? Yes. And he comes back to life, and then he loses his life, and then he asks for that. Do you think they would let it happen? Yes. No. Nope. <laughs> what do you mean? No. How are you going to nope. say no to the fucking Walt Disney that he wants a parade, and at the end, Mickey's on his casket and he's waving to the people? Sadly. So, and fun he- fact about the the Disney company: it is no longer run by the Disneys anymore. <laughs> it is a. Uh, Oh yeah, that's right. It's a, it's a 
multi-staged uh, business That's with right. different people as heads. Yeah, yeah. Like the Disney's like kind of fighting for like workers' rights and stuff like that, but like that's such an uphill battle within themselves, yeah. Yeah. So, no, they wouldn't they wouldn't allow it. They'd be like, No, we're the bigger shareholders. Fuck off, so, corpse of Walt Disney. <laughs> I'm not a corpse. I'm gonna haunt your park from here on out. That's my Walt Disney impression. <laughs> it sounds nothing like him. This is the best impression, though. But you don't even stun anything like it. <laughs> yeah, my. Uh, if if you ever seen that one movie, I can't remember the name of. I think it's called uh, Mr. Disney. Tom Hanks is Mr. Disney. Oh, that um, one, yes. Yeah, yeah, that one. I think he's plays uh, Walt Disney as a very soft spoken man. But no, I'm imagining him as like a tough Southern drill master. That's how <laughs> Walt Disney sounds like to me. Saving Mr. Banks. There you go. That's what it is. It was not called, as I said, Hello, Mr. Disney, uh, featuring Tom Hanks. <laughs> Um, I want to do one more amusement story just because I uh the uh Captain Soldiers was very good, but I wanted to I just remembered it and it went with your being alone at an amusement park story, so I wanted to say it. <laughs> uh, so during Horror Nights, um, specifically, uh, when we go, I go with my brother and my sister, uh, Yowie Mom and Nux, um, and but for the fra- the past couple years, they refused to ride the Terror Tram because there's clowns and they're terrified of clowns. So they don't want to go on an entire tram ride where you're climbing up a mountain and being scared by clowns the entire way. <laughs> and I say, and I say to them every time we go, I paid for this fucking ticket. I'm going on the terror tram. <laughs> There's nothing that's stopping me. Just yes, the terror tram. There's nothing terrifying about that ride at all. The, <laughs> nothing in the name. No, the, the most terrifying thing about the terror tram is that you have to fucking climb up a mountain <laughs> during it. That's the thing they didn't even tell you is that as you're going, so if people don't know, you take the tram ride, but the tram ride stops halfway through and then you walk through the actual sets, but um, there's people scaring you left and right. Um, <laughs> and it's pretty scary in the beginning when you're like, literally when the terror tram breaks down, they say, and this is where we're dropping you off. And fun fact, when I first went to Horror Nights with friends, I didn't know that the terror tram did that. So I was in college. Same. I was like, Hmm? Fucking same. <laughs> yeah. So I went with my good friend Zarbon, who we've mentioned before, <laughs> my oh, college yes. friend. Um, uh, he took me on there, and he didn't tell me that this is what the Terror Tram was going to do. So the Terror Tram stopped, and he said, and I said, uh, so if we just wait here, they're going to take us back? <laughs> and he said, nope, time to walk. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, God. And at this point, I'm fucking terrified because I'm looking at everything, and it's like, oh, my God, people are coming out and scaring me. And I'm very easy to scare, by the way. It does not take much to scare me. Uh, and halfway through, and every single time I've been on Terror Tram since, I stop being scared at the point where I go, bitch, I'm tired. I don't want to deal with you right now. <laughs> I've been climbing up this fucking piece of shit mountain for the past five minutes, and I just can't deal with your shit right now. And it's been true. I, when you go by yourself, it's real fun because you get to watch other people. Um, so you get to watch a lot of the group of the girls go, ah! And then, like, actually look. I see actual girls in terror go, like, I don't want to go in the front. There's someone, they're getting ready to scare the next person, and I'm totally the next one in. And so I just go, like, behind them and wait and wait for them to be scared. And it's a I... lot of fun. Yeah. And this is something that I've inherited from my father. Because one time, my dad, when we went to Universal, um, we went to specifically, I wanted, it's not around anymore, but it was called a horror maze. It was basically the the terror thing that was there 24 seven uh, before it was mm, taken yes. down. If you know what I mean, it's where you go through and there's a bunch of like classic monsters and stuff. So we were going through that. I went through there with my dad and my dad was, we were behind a group, a large group of girls who were t- scared out of my mind. Cause they were like, everything was jumping out of them and they were screaming loudly. And behind them was my dad laughing and clapping and saying shit in Spanish as he was like, basically saying, go for him, go, go, go. <laughs> I have never seen my father as happy, except for that point where he left us behind in Disneyland to go ride Indiana Jones when I was like five. No, I was three, I think. And my my sister was a one-year-old and my cousin was four. And then he left all of us with my mom before there were cell phones so he could ride the Indiana Jones ride by himself. (laughs) And I have a vivid memory of this because it's one of my early memories because I just remember my mom red angry from the sun yelling at my dad and my dad looking back at her with the biggest fucking goofy smile I've ever seen. (laughs) 
so happy that he got to ride the ride. <laughs> and my father also drilled into us like, the second Disneyland opens, we're rushing towards Indiana Jones. If you can't keep up, then I guess you're not <laughs> coming with us to Indiana Jones. <laughs> And so I've always learned. Uh, so a lot of amusement park stuff is specifically going for my dad. But yeah, I like. So I, I keep going to the tra- terror tram by myself, and I really hope they would stop doing clowns so that my brother and sister could fucking join me. <laughs> so I'm not constantly by myself watching other people get scared, and I kind of occasionally have the the chat with the people who work. So here's the fun thing about the people who work there for specifically horror nights: they don't work for Universal. For my oh, what. They're- Mm-hmm. They're actors. <laughs> no, they're a- they're actors, or as the people there when they were described to me as they're carnies. <laughs> they bring yeah. in a bunch of carnies. That as well. <laughs> so it's a lot of fun. I also say I don't think I'm not sure if he still works there. But when the reason I was able to get a job at Universal was because of Zarbon, because he was like a higher up there. No. Oh. Yeah. So that's fun. So, so just for the showing that I've only ever been able to get jobs through friends, because that's really the only way to get a job. I mean, hey, man, it works. That's that's how I am where I'm at now. It's true. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, that's our amusement park stories. Yep. I and hope with you... that, I, I unfortunately must take my leave. You know. Goodbye, Reiko. <laughs> but you know, it was nice. It was good. Thank you for sharing your stories with me, everybody. Thank um, you for joining us. Maybe you'll be here for another yeah. episode of Between Buddies. I, I would love to. I would love to. Yeah. I just like we need to. Schedule to think more time stuff like that, but like you know what? Um, uh, a message to you listeners out there: um, hashtag free the nipple. Uh, invest in uh, nipple products. Don't and, li- uh, don't listen to him. Today's hey, man, I have some judgment and advice. Okay, I'm sober. I'm sober. I like that one time at Disneyland when I ruined that kid's birthday. Hmm. So yeah. All right. I love you, beautiful people, and I'll talk to you all next time. Yes. Yes. <laughs> He didn't say it. He didn't say the fucking I wish he did. He did He didn't fucking say the safe word. (laughs) Fucking You know what? He's not allowed back. (laughs) Hashtag the dipple is secured. (laughs) Keep your shirt down. Uh comment down below. Hashtag Keep Raycoom out of this shit. <laughs> or hashtag free the nipple if you want more Raycoom, depending on your status. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's a, that's a good episode of Between Buddies. We don't know what the next one was going to be because we never know. But hopefully you enjoyed this one that actually was fully coherent throughout and stuck to a theme. <laughs> They're not always going to be this way. So as always, I'm going to say, why don't you guys say goodbye? Bye. Me off, Jace. Damn it! I was about to do a whole bit where I was like, "Fuck those goodbyes." <laughs> Here's how we actually end the show. <laughs> Play us off, Jace. M i c k e y m o u s e. I need at least thirty seconds, motherfucker. You gotta keep going. <laughs> Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Mickey Mouse. Break it down. <laughs> I don't fucking remember the words of that song.